Have you ever had to sit through a dull or uninspiring screen share where our peers and colleagues scramble through a hard to follow update accompanied by impossible to read screens filled with reams and reams of code? Oh, this is boring. Know, I'm lost. It's boring. I'm lost, boring. man. I don't know what's going on. Boring. Would you like to avoid others feeling this way about your own demos? Great! There's a single overarching guiding principle that brings all of the following advice together. Everything you're about to hear is based on one thing. Remove the distractions. Let's look at some of the top five mistakes that engineers make when giving a demo via a screen share. Mistake number one, screen resolution. That super rad, ultra high-res widescreen monitor that you use for coding doesn't look so rad when demoing a full screen over a video conference. In fact, it really sucks to be on the other end of this. And here's why. Many people use a laptop, a tablet, or a phone for video conference calls and meetings like Zoom or Teams. Now, that ultra-wide, super high-res screen looks like a scrambled and compressed mess. People end up squinting or trying to zoom in to see what is going on. And the compression that is used by these video conferencing tools, it tends to turn everything into a cryptic mess. Oh, this looks Oh man, awful. this sucks. People need to figure out what to look at and they need help understanding what it is that you're actually showing them. So how can we avoid it? Zoom in on all the things. It's surprising how much more engaged people are when they can actually read your code on a screen. Make it as easy as possible for them to see. So zoom in or increase the font size of your code editor. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. Share a single window. If the demo involves a browser application, just share the tabs that you need for the demo because people will look at your other open browser tabs and they'll be distracted from what it is that you're trying to show them. If you're using a terminal or an IDE, just share the windows that you need. Avoid confusing people by making them guess what to pay attention to or where to look. Both of these approaches will help us focus the attention of your audience and remove distractions. Mistake number two, <laughs> no script. And then we go to the component. In the, in the, um, and then we click on uh, that thing over there. We go over here, I think. Um, and then. Wait, no. No, wait. Uh, no, no, sorry. Bear with me. I broke it. Um, I'm sorry, everyone. Hang on. Listening to somebody monotonically stumble and mumble through a sentence is painful. There's only one reason this happens during a demo. <laughs> no script. When we need to figure out what to say or think aloud for the first time as we perform something, it generally comes out as a word salad. It's full of this filler words and fluffy content. Write a script. Think about what you're going to say. Write it down. Make it clear and make it crisp. Do you hear me stumbling? No. That's because I am reading a script. Use inflection when you talk, inject energy and passion, enunciate your words, and take people on a journey by just the sound of your voice. Mistake number three, showcasing APIs as JSON blobs. Have you ever watched a demo where someone posts a big blob of JSON into a window, it presses a button, and then a different blob of JSON appears next to it? Are you impressed? No, me either. I don't think anyone is, but, but why? Engineers spend more time looking at JSON and YAML than we want to. Many of these people are working on or creating or consuming APIs or configurations. Now, seeing blobs of JSON or YAML it doesn't help understand the value of the feature or what it does. It just shows the static rendered output. So how do you showcase the value? Build a small application or a UI to showcase consuming or engaging with the new API. It can be enough to show the, the value of the entire feature. An end-to-end -end demonstration of the feature is best, showcasing the end user experience and the value to the business and the application. Mistake number four, the nervous mouse. 
Have you ever tried to follow what someone is saying, but you can't because they're clicking randomly all over the place or highlighting random text or just clicking the mouse over and over? It's a typical way to expel nervous energy. It's not unlike nail biting or leg jiggling. It helps us focus our minds by giving our hands or legs something to do. Remember fidget spinner toys, right? However, it's really distracting for somebody trying to follow you during a demo. When telling a story, a mouse pointer is like a cursor, guiding the eyes and the attention of the audience watching. It's no different from a laser pointer being used to highlight where on a slide people should focus when you're making points during talk. Be aware of what you're doing with your hands and where your mouse is. Use it like a guide, a pointer, when you're moving between actions. When people lose sight of the mouse pointer, they start scanning for it everywhere. And every second that they do that, they are not listening to you and they're not listening to the demo. What? What? What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? Excuse me. Mistake number five, the virtual desktop shuffle. Some of us like to keep different apps on different virtual desktops, things like browsers or developer tools, consoles, etc. It's all nicely separated out and it makes for a great experience when you're working alone. But watching somebody flip desktops, trying to find the one that they need with all the things on them for the demo, it can be excruciating and it's very distracting. But why? Bringing people along on the journey is essential to giving a good demo. When you're flipping between desktops, it looks pretty bad over a screen share and distracts the audience as to what they should actually be paying attention to. Keep all the windows needed for the demo on the same desktop. Let's recap those top five mistakes to avoid. One, screen resolution. Two, no script. Three, APIs as JSON blobs. Four, the nervous mouse. And five, the virtual desktop shuffle. And remember that guiding principle of remove distractions as you plan your next demo. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe. And why not check out quervix.com for more adventures in code. Until next time.